And then, of course, in Acts chapter 1, verse 22, we have the testimony concerning the need for a party to be an eyewitness of Jesus Christ to replace Judas, who lost his bishopric. So, remember, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 and 10, the scriptures state there, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. At the time when the apostles were on the scene, we didn't have full disclosure of the revelation of God. So they only knew in part, which is the reason why we needed prophets and apostles to establish this foundation. Once the foundation is complete and the Lord Jesus Christ closes out the canon, in Revelation chapter 22, the scripture states, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from things which are written in this book. So once that full disclosure and canon has been brought to a close, by none other than Jesus Christ, the very chief cornerstone of all revelation, once that revelation is brought to a close, there is no more need for a prophet anymore, who were all Israelites, according to Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The oracles of God were given by Hebrews. You will Every party that you'll ever see give revelation in your New Testament is either a Hebrew or a proselyte. That's not coincidental. That agrees with Romans 3, verses 1 and 2. And an apostle, of course, has to agree with Acts chapter 1, verse 22. Namely, they have to be an eyewitness of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Once the revelation is closed out, as the tale there in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18, the office of the prophet is brought to a close. And then, of course, once the last apostle dies, there are no more apostles, and we're lively stones. We're, we're built upon this foundation until this project of the temple is completed. Now, backtracking a little bit, the Lord Jesus Christ, here back during the time of his tenure as he walked as a man, qualified conclusively in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32, that these parties would have to be converted. They would have to be converted unto a new resurrected Christ. Where do we find that? In Luke chapter 22, verse 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Remember, that revelation is given at the Lord's Supper, the eve upon which he was to be crucified. So they walked within three and a half years. During that entire tenure, neither party had the Holy Ghost, excluding Jesus Christ, of course. This is reaffirmed by another scripture, by none other than Jesus Christ. In John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, the scripture states, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He had not yet been resurrected here on the third day. So we're at the point of Christ's ascension. And of course he gives disclosure concerning the need for his apostles to teach all things whatsoever he's commanded them. One of the things that he has commanded to do is to teach to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So we're going to track through the scripture to determine as to whether the apostles were indeed obedient to his charge and to what extent of what they teach and where to who. So the question becomes, will the apostles be obedient? We will see that approximately 3,024 souls, which is very conservative in terms of numbers when we add them all up, were baptized unto a resurrected Jesus Christ in obedience to Christ's charge 
which continued right up until Paul's last public address that he gave before his people of Israel in Acts chapter 22, just before he was incarcerated, tried, and finally sent to Rome. We will see that Peter opens up the door to both Jew and Gentile. Uh, we will see that he will obey Christ's charge concerning the delivery of the gospel prior to Christ's ascension. And he will teach all nations, including Gentiles, to be baptized unto a resurrected Jesus Christ. Remember in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19, the Lord Jesus Christ gave the Apostle Peter the keys to open up the door. And we'll see that in every case, Peter is involved in Acts chapter 2, uh, 38. He's involved in Acts chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. And then once the, that door is open, Philip resumes. And then he opens up the door unto the Gentiles finally in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. Once the door is opened unto the Gentiles, we later will see that the Apostle Paul gets confirmed as the Apostle to the Gentiles. He resumes his post, and that the Apostle Paul will agree, will agree with both the order and assessment of Peter in his gospel message to the Gentile body of people. So let's start here in Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. Now the order that I just touched on came directly from the chief of the corner, namely Jesus Christ, and the order that he is going to reveal to the apostles and prophets is qualified in Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. The scriptures state, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Jesus Christ, the chief of the cornerstone, agrees with John's testimony concerning the giving of the Holy Ghost. Namely, that there is no spirit, and we will find out later on in Acts chapter 19 that these followers of John also agree with Jesus Christ, and that they also agree with John's testimony concerning the giving of the Spirit of God. He goes on to say, and says here, When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because remember, John preached the baptism of repentance. Christ then took the twelve, and he ordained them to preach to the Hebrew body people, not unto the way of the Gentiles, and it was the kingdom message, and they're concerned this kingdom will now emerge. Look at what he says to them in verse 7, Acts chapter 1, verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, and or to the Gentiles. So going back to Acts chapter 2, verse 36, it's clear, the Apostle Peter is referring to Hebrews. Let all the house of Israel know that that Jesus whom he have cru crucified, God hath made him both Lord and Christ. So he's speaking about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Peter addresses the Hebrews and proselytes which were under the law. And in the process of being converted as, as detailed in Acts chapter 2 verses 41 to 47, which stands in agreement with the Lord Jesus Christ's testimony in Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, which stands in agreement with Jesus Christ's testimony concerning their need to be converted in John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, and in Luke chapter 22, verse 32. So here, the Hebrew body people in Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 47, are brought into the body of Christ. Now, in case anybody was wondering as to why I did not use the text of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, the answer is very simple. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, has got absolutely nothing to do with water baptism. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, speaks of entering into the body of Christ, which we just looked at here in Acts chapter 2, and we will see that the apostles certainly do teach and preach and be obedient to Jesus Christ's charge of Matthew chapter 28, 
verses 18 and 19, and do indeed water baptize.